Ah, happy 2020. Welcome into the new year. And on this glorious day, why not start the videos off with some hip hop? Yes, hip hop, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ain't that what happened? <laughs> Ain't that what pays the bills? Yes, LL, that's what pays the bills. <laughs> now, LL Cool J is making a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Well, that's exactly what we call it. It's a comeback. <laughs> LL Cool J is making a comeback after signing a very lucrative deal with Def Jam, his old label that he parted ways from as he's the first artist ever in Def Jam. Now, LL has received uh, num numerous awards, probably the most accomplished, longest career in the game, longer than Jay-Z, yes, and most beloved. You know, not a lot of people dislike LL Cool J. Different than when he was in the mix of everything, but he was able to transition from that to becoming a... A uh, Hollywood star, have a successful television career. You know, who could forget him playing God in N2D or any given Sunday? You know, but it was uh, his role in Mind Hunters, which a lot of people didn't know, that led to almost all of those guys getting detective jobs on television. Mind Hunters was a good. Tell them, I mean, it was a good movie. It was just done on a low scale, and it was put out like three years after it was recorded. He left Def Jam in 2008. Ten years ago, almost 11 years ago, he walked out of Def Jam. Exit 13. Walked away from Def Jam. But he didn't stay out for long. He put out his own independent album called Authentic. And that was in 2013. And that was his last album. Now many thought, okay, everyone's hitting me up today. What a beautiful feeling. Now everyone assumed and thought LL Cool J was done making records as he, he does his Rock the, Rock the Bells tours, doing his classic hit records. Like, he could tour for, for whatever he feel like it. Okay? And that's it. Now, he started doing songs with, you know, Van Halen and doing all these other records on the Authentic album with Bootsy Collins and Snoop, and it just was... It was not what people thought. You know, they were just like, what is this? Charlie Wilson and the new love song. And it just wasn't, it was a grown up LL Cool J more than it was a LL that we knew and loved as the, as the uh, artist, LL Cool J. Then, just out of the blue, he records a song called Accidental Racist. A uh, country music song, uh, rap country music, and that went left. <laughs> and since then, LL has not recorded any music. He basically stayed out of the, the, the mix to everything died down. And now he's returned, and I always call him the world's greatest rapper. He transcended the sport, I mean the sport, the, well, the sport of hip-hop into a, a level that many didn't think it could go to. Run DMC got it to a level, and then he took it to another level. And that kept rap going. You know, women looked at him as the first sex symbol. The guys looked at him as a battle rapper. 
So he had both sides. He had the I Need Love record. And it was like the first love song really ever accepted in hip hop on that scale. And lyrically, he, you couldn't touch him. And he was the guy. He was that man. And he held that crown for a long time to he created the term GOAT that they use for everything now, greatest of all time. I'm the GOAT, the greatest of all times. Named his album The GOAT. Everybody else now use that. Yo, he's the GOAT. It's LL. <laughs> you know, so just giving you a quick rundown of what LL Cool J is. He's returning with a new album and he's working with Q-Tip as he released on his Twitter account that he's in the lab working with Q-Tip. Does not mean Q-Tip is doing the entire album. When LL Cool J makes an album, he normally collaborates with a lot of different people. He don't just um, have one artist that he works with or one producer. He makes a collective project. So for LL Cool J, this would be something essential for him as he'll be making uh, different records. I'm hearing he's got, like, this is going to be uh, like a classic album. Like, he's got um, uh, Eric Sermon. Supposedly, he's going to come in and do some work. He's got um, Primo to do some tracks. So, those are just rumored right now, those two. But I'm definitely intrigued into the project. Well, he's always felt comfortable at the House of Hit Studios, um, but a lot of people go to a West Lake recording studios. That's in like West Hollywood, and you can go to Henson. So it, it don't really matter, you know. Um, he he hadn't been at the House of Hicks in I don't know how long, but he's always felt comfortable there. That was uh, Marley's house. They called it the House of Hits. You know, that was everybody working together. You know, and you don't make it this far in hip hop without knowing some of the how your music should sound or how your voice should sound on a track. You know, so if you don't know about the mix the mixing and on the mix board and everything else and you know by that time, rappers should be they basically their own engineers. Like with Tupac, he knew how he wanted his voice to sound. He liked his voice to be doubled. And, you know, that's when he was like, my voice comes off better when it's doubled. And a lot of people, like a lot of engineers, you know, that's how Tupac's sound was and that's how he liked it put out to the public. He wanted it doubled and that's how Tupac had his sound and it was unique to him. And it came off right with him as he argued with it. some engineers early on in Digital Underground who couldn't, you know, do it the way he liked it, you know, and have it all situated. Now this is the engineers, you know, and he's the guy who's like, I'm a you know, drop my vocals, get out, and let everybody else do their job. He was one of those guys. You know, some people like to stay around for the entire process to see how it comes out. Pac was somebody who didn't have a lot of time. He wants to drop his vocals, get it done, move on to the next project. Let's go, 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 go. And it's good and that's bad. You're going to have a lot of material out, but some of it is not going to be worthy you know of the type of you know uh detail it should have had or it could have been reworked and if you listen to some of the projects they were still in the process of being worked when you listen to the machiavelli projects they were still in the process of being like reworked and reworked out someone like ll cool j when he makes a record He's involved in the entire process, and no matter how long that process takes, he wants to hear how it sounds. He want to, 
you know, make his decision on, okay, we need to fix this, fix that. It's a collective um, process where he understands pitch, he understands sound, and unlike a lot of rappers who have a lot of ego, he knows how to check his ego at the door and say, all right, well, help me structure if this isn't sounding right, you know. Let's go ahead and get this done. And with Q-Tip, Q-Tip brings that to the table. A lot of you guys haven't realized that Q-Tip has produced and executive produced a lot of albums, including Kanye West, working with him for I don't know how long. But, yeah, he's definitely been that guy. So I know T.I. like, we ain't me. I'm Tip. No. <laughs> the original Tip. So, and no, Q-Tip is not my cousin. No, we're not related at all. Known also as The Abstract. Because that was his DJ name. See, a lot, of, a lot of artists back in those days were DJs. Because that's how you normally got involved and got money. You normally DJ shows and DJ house parties. And then you would grab the mic and start rapping. So people would pay attention to you. So back in those days, you had to know how to DJ and rap. Every member of Run DMC was a DJ. Run, DJ Run, uh, DMC was a DJ, right along with Jam Master J. Seeing Russell, Russell Simmons was a DJ. Look. The DJ is to know what the people want, play the music, spin the records, knowing the vibe of people. I've DJed parties without even wanting to be the DJ because I knew how to play certain music and step outside of myself or what I want to hear and play what the crowd would respond to, how to play, how to play records. Like, this is a high energy record. High energy record means everybody, you can't play like four and five high energy records in a row. People be exhausted and passed out. You can control the entire audience with music from the DJ booth. I've seen the world's greatest DJs and how they can control it. And I mean, they, they play God. It was like, we're God right now. And everybody moves to what we want them to move to. He's like, now we want everybody to be calm. Watch this. Boom, 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 boom. Play the song, boom, everybody's calm, relaxed. He's like, I could start a riot in here if I wanted to, just playing the right song. And people would just get rough. And the attitude would change in the whole room. It's just amazing when you watch that performance. And Q-Tip, and that's how, as an artist, you kind of know what people want to hear. And know the type of records just by being in the clubs. And seeing how people react because these are the people that buy music. These are the people that's going to go to their concerts. And you get an idea for what people like. And that's how Abstract used to work, you know. So he started working with Kanye West, um, Consequence, all these guys. And collectively, they helped out in a whole lot of projects. And, you know, a Tribe Called Quest, everything they've done has been what? Success? <laughs> You know, they're probably one of the most successful alternative hip hop groups. <laughs> you know, um, it was sad to me that they had so much discord in there with between him and Fife. Rest in peace to the Fife, the Five Footer. You know, it's just that's how it was. And they were just going in different directions. Now, Q-Tip in the 90s went completely Islamic. It's changed his diet, his, his way of thinking. And he was no longer Jonathan Davis. He became Kamal Fareed. But his love for music and his style of hip hop never changed. He was mostly jazz influenced, um, you know, and blues. 
So all the songs you hear from the native tongue family that they was you know pushing out and everything else. And man, it was just it was unique at the time. So when he went solo and he had a, a little bit of success and putting him with LL Cool J and all of that connection of hip hop and just the blend of all of them together in a unit, that's going to stand the test of time, I think, because when you got people that have a genuine respect for one another and have the knowledge of music, you can't help but have a great project. So whatever he's overseeing, like if he's the overseer of it, no matter who comes over, if he's EPing the album, it can't help but be a classic. So I'm I'm very interested to see what turns out. You know, I'm I'm one of those curious people that want to see a finished project. You know what I mean? So enjoy your 2020 day. I'm going to have a lot more in store for you today. Just wanted to talk some hip-hop with you to start the new year out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so hopefully you like this video. You uh, support my page. Who's going to be my first Cash App donation of 2020? That's what we waiting to see. Or you can hit the description box and hit see who's going to be my first Streamlab. You want to donate to the Streamlab? There you go. Somebody told me to open up a Patreon this year. I might. I might. So that way I can give y'all something special and have it just for those guys who really put in, you know, and donate to the page and really, you know, put in for the page. So, yeah, I should. I might do that this year. Set that up. So, anyway, I'm out. Be blessed. Be safe. I'm out.